The Kapiansk direction has been attracting the attention of the whole of Ukraine in recent weeks and months. The situation periodically escalates, and then we manage to stabilize it with considerable effort. The enemy does not abandon its intentions to storm, go on the offensive, and continue what it has failed to do. Russian troops resumed assault operations at the Kupiansk and Lyman directions and twice unsuccessfully tried to break through the Ukrainian defense. They deployed units of the newly created 25th Combined Arms Army along the front line in the kupiansk lyman direction. Ukrainian forces have recorded a total of 12,000 soldiers of the 25th Army along the front line in the kupiansk lyman direction. It consists of mobilized and personnel of severely degraded units that have completely lost their combat capability. This, of course, does not mean that the Russians are now going to drive to Lyman and then to Kharkiv. They have replaced the battered units with two divisions of fresh, though insufficiently trained, mobilized troops. The campaign planned by the Russian command for the summer and fall of 2023 is clearly not going as expected. So much so that it had to disrupt the deployment of its strategic reserves and urgently redeploy two formed combined arms armies. Their strategic deployment was supposed to last until about December of this year. That is, according to the Russian general staff, Having repulsed the Ukrainian offensive in the summer and early fall, they expected to have two fresh combined arms armies at their disposal by the beginning of winter. All this made sense only if Russian troops managed to completely slow down the Ukrainian offensive this summer and fall. For this purpose, the general staff of the Russian armed forces planned and prepared a strategic defensive operation, which was supposed to stop and deplete the strike groups of the Ukrainian armed forces. Then, through a local offensive operation of an operational and tactical scale on the Kupiansk direction, to force the Ukrainian command to spend its reserves and thus create conditions for regaining the strategic initiative by the beginning of winter. That is, for a strategic offensive operation. Everything is, as they say, by the book, everything is within the framework of the classical Soviet military school. However, the problem is that the Ukrainian offensive has not been completely stopped despite all the bravura statements by officials of the top military and political leadership of the Russian Federation, including Putin himself. The strike tactical groups of the armed forces of Ukraine are still not exhausted, or rather, they are, but not as quickly and intensively as the Russian command would like. Accordingly, it has not yet been possible to completely slow them down either. Obviously, if the two Russian armies were in the right tone at the moment, they would have surfaced on their own in other operational and tactical areas, for example, near Kapiansk, Bakhmut, Donetsk, or Tokmak, rather than being used as reserves. Currently, the Ukrainian defense forces are keeping the occupiers in the Bakhmut direction in a semi-surrounding fire and are doing everything possible to cut off the enemy supplies. They are trying to prevent Ukrainian soldiers from developing an offensive on the northern flank of Bakhmut. Fighting to the northeast and south of the destroyed city continues again. The Russians have redeployed the 88th Motorized Rifle Brigade and started counterattacking in the area east of Andrivka, as well as north and northeast of Kurdyamivka. Fierce fighting is taking place for Kurdyamivka, and the Russians have been pushed back to its eastern and southern parts. The Russians understand the necessity of the northern flank near Bakhmut, as its loss could lead to a semi-circumvention of the real flank, not just the fire flank. This can then lead to various consequences, of course, as it will be harder for the enemy to defend when there are Ukrainian forces on all sides. That is why the Russians are making every effort to hold these positions and prevent us from developing an offensive in this area of the front. To achieve their goal, the occupiers north of Bakhmut are resorting to dynamic defense tactics and counteroffensive actions. However, the situation of the invaders is complicated by growing logistical problems. The main logistics route, the bakhmut Halyuka Highway, is under fire control by Ukrainian troops. This makes it difficult for them to use this artery, and the enemy is trying to use other logistics routes, including those leading from the temporarily occupied territory. There are still a few roads left. The enemy continues to supply its weapons, ammunition, and people, but we are doing our best to gain operational space and continue to develop our offensives in different directions and to deplete other logistics routes. The defense forces are getting the desired result and moving forward. This is confirmed by the fact that Ukraine has already deoccupied more than 50% of the territories that Russians seized after February 24, 2022.